Brian here, I'll try and keep this short and sweet, which I never do. Um, so a few people have asked me about, say, on their electric cars, the range that they're getting at the moment. So it's November, it's still pretty warm for November, but some people are complaining about the, not complaining, they're just saying that my full charge is now showing me a lesser amount uh, for what I can actually get out of the car. So say on an Ionic 5, uh, we have a demo there at the moment that's reading maybe 305 kilometers. So what I'm saying to people is, yeah, okay, your predicted range, which is based on historical journeys and, you know, the, uh, temperature and things like that as well and loads of other factors uh, what i'm saying to them is do you know what look at your predicted range but look at actually what you're covering as well so i'm just curious to say while the car might say x amount of predicted range you might actually cover more than what it's predicting anyway let's check it out so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to drive this ionic 5 here and this car it's currently telling us that uh right fine so that car is currently uh, 12,676 and it's saying we've a range of 304 kilometers so I'm going to do about 160 kilometers tonight and tomorrow and then what we're going to do is we'll see exactly has the actual mileage covered uh, correlated and tallied up with the predicted range and I'm going to drive pretty normally like I'm not going to drive uh, slow or anything like that I'm not going to try and conserve range I'm just going to drive the car normally and we'll see what actually happens in terms of that. So leaving Kildare. On all electric cars, we see big variations between the uh, ranges on the car. So it really comes down to what the driver has been doing. So I've seen people that have ended up getting, you know, low predicted ranges and then their driving habits change. They're not using the motorway as much or they become easier drivers or whatever it is, or they've adapted and their ranges start to go upwards. So we'll see people on maybe a 58 kilowatt hour battery like this with ranges anywhere between high 200s up into the high 300s and it really comes down to historically what the car has faced in terms of environment environment being the driver environment being the levels of wind and the temperatures especially outside the car okay so i'm finished this part of the journey right so uh, let's refresh our memories we started off with 12,676 kilometers on the clock and we also had 304 kilometers of range. Now we are down to 240 kilometers of range. So 304, as in we've lost 64 kilometers of range. However, we have covered 75 kilometers in the car. So the thing here is basically your range, your predicted range, like that predicted range was based on the previous driving that was done beforehand and the previous weather conditions and temperatures and all that kind of stuff. But as you can see on this evening's drive, I have covered um, more kilometers then the car actually predicted uh, I was going to lose in terms of range, if that makes sense. I'm back in the car in the morning. Uh, so one thing I have changed, I've turned off the heating because for some reason it is stupidly warm at the moment in the middle of November, 16 degrees. Uh, so technically the car, we're starting at 12.751. We'll do another 75 kilometers, but I'm leaving uh, this time with a predicted range of 2.44. I'd imagine I managed to cover more distance last night than the car predicted I was going to cover because it had a different experience for the previous drives beforehand so it was basically on the older information i expect maybe on today's journey now it's very windy this morning as well so there's quite a strong headwind against me so i'm having to accelerate a little bit more but i'd imagine the gap won't be as big because it's starting to learn my driving style and it'll make more of a prediction going forward based on what it encountered last night anyway so i'm back at the garage this morning 12826 which means we covered another 75 kilometers here's the result actually it's kind of surprised me predicted range now 169 we left at 244 which technically means we've lost we've lost 75 kilometers so that is actually perfect the trip uh, the predicted range has predicted exactly what we've done but probably based on last night's journey so it kind of i suppose used the information from last night's journey and driving style to predict how this morning was so i suppose to conclude um the predicted range is based on historical information so some people are getting we'll say if you get a range that's slightly lower in the winter or whenever it is you just have to think back and go, what have been, what have I been doing for the last couple of days? How has the weather been? How has the temperatures been in the last couple of days? So as you can see, last night's journey and tonight's journey, or this morning's journey, uh, give two different results. Today, it's actually bang on, but last night, I ended up covering 11 kilometers more than what the range was predicting that I had left in the car. So um, anyway, it's not a very conclusive video, but from the point of view, I, I guess what I'm trying to show is, the predicted range is only prediction, it's only an estimate, and it's imperfect, and it's based on historical information. So it doesn't mean that you won't be able to go further than what it's saying. So one other point to note actually on electric cars like Ionic and uh, Kona, just go into your settings and actually have a look here at winter mode. So there is a winter mode on the vehicle. 
I haven't seen it and I can't confirm it. I can't find confirmation anywhere. But I've been told that this winter mode may activate itself during the winter. The winter mode is basically meant to heat the battery and basically it preserves function in terms of how the battery works, but also how it charges. But there's a bit of a contradiction on it because actually essentially by using that winter mode, it's actively heating the battery to preserve function and charging, but that actually uses energy to warm the battery in the first place, which now contradicts the whole thing because okay fair enough it's improving efficiency in the battery but you need power to warm the battery and that's actually going to affect your range so for some people go into your car and you might see actually in the winter it's now gone into a winter mode which may have an effect on your overall predicted range also for anyone that owns an electric car on a windy day to like today when you're experiencing quite a bit of wind you are going to have to use the throttle more and that's just the way it is also these batteries do the best the closer it is or has been to 30 degrees outside, uh, the battery operates really efficiently at those kind of temperatures. So I suppose as we get into the winter, while it's not that cold today, you are actually finding, they will say that it's less frequent that we have warm days. So the battery management system, I'd imagine adapts to that. So you will see a difference between the winter and the summer. That's just a fact of life. And then you will see a difference when the weather gets cold for a couple of reasons. You need to heat the cabin in your car, but actually one thing as well is you're going to have to keep the windscreen demisted quite regularly as well. So if you've been doing that over the last few journeys, all those things are starting to impact. These things are quite clever and they take in a lot of information and in how they predict the range. So like I said to you, it's not a perfect thing. If you are watching your range drop in the winter quite normal and then you should see in the summer, it can start to go back up again. Um, anyway, it's not a completely conclusive video, but hopefully it just gives you some bit of an insight. Uh, or maybe if you know this stuff already, fair enough. Anyway, thanks for watching.